So now that we've gone through the structure of our Rails application, let's begin by setting up a model, controller, and view for our posts in our application. In our blog application, we want to have the ability to create, read, update, as well as destroy um, posts, otherwise known as CRUD. To be able to store and manipulate data, we need to have a model. Remember, models are the Ruby classes that handle the business logic and do the heavy lifting in your application. They talk to the database, validate data, etc. So creating a model in Rails is easy. To begin, make sure you have your terminal open and your Rails server is still running in the other tab. Um, and make sure you are in the correct directory. What we are going to do is we're going to use the Rails generate command and we're going to generate a model called post. So we're going to do Rails generate model and then post with capital P and then we are going to uh, add a few attributes uh, to this uh, generate command. We're going to do title colon string and body colon text. So hit enter and run that command. So what exactly happened here? Well, first off, we're using the Rails command to create a new model called post. Um, so what about the title string and the body text stuff? Well, those are telling uh, Rails that in addition to creating the post model um, or the table, we want to add uh, columns on the table, a column called title and a column called body with the attributes of a string for the title column and text for the body column. Uh, there are several different attributes you can use for various columns, uh, which are meant for different things. A string is used for small data types such as uh, a title. Columns are strings by default. You can use text for longer pieces of textual data such as a paragraph. Integer is used for storing whole numbers. Binary is used for storing data such as images, audio, or video. Boolean is used for storing true or false values. Date is used for storing the date. Time is used for storing the time. Date time is used for storing both the date and the time in a single column. Timestamp is used for storing the date and a time in a column as well. One thing to note is that timestamp values are converted from the current time zone to UTC uh, for storage and then converted back from UTC to the current time zone for retrieval. Um, and this does not happen for the date time attribute. Uh, we also have decimals for storing uh, decimals. We have a float for storing decimals as well. And a general rule of thumb is you want to use a float when you don't care about the precision of the number because it usually rounds it up. You want to use a decimal when you need to have the exact value because it doesn't matter how long that um, decimal value is. And we have primary key that can be used to uniquely identify each row in a table. So of the files that were generated by that command, there are two that we want to focus on. Uh, we have this uh, migration file as well as this model file. Let's open up uh, Sublime. Let's open up, uh, go under app, models, and the post.rb model. So we, uh, Rails has created a class of post which is inheriting from active record base. Rails maps the class of post to the post table in your database through active record base. So Rails does the heavy lifting here so you don't have to, which is pretty awesome. Now if we take a look at the migration file under db migrate and open up that migration, we have another class of create post. And what is happening here is we are creating a table, uh, a table called post. And on that table, we have two uh, columns or two attributes, one with a string and one with text, and they're being called title and body. So even though we have this migration file, if we look um, over here, we don't have a schema.rb, um, which means uh, the post table hasn't yet been created. To do that, what we need to do is run a command called uh, rake db migrate, and that's going to run the migration file 
um, and add the column or add the table as well as the columns in our database. So let's do rake db colon migrate. All right, and now if we go back, you can see there's a schema.rb. And remember, the schema.rb is like a snapshot of the current state of the database. So there's nothing more to it. We've uh, just created our uh, first post. So let's move on and create a controller. So we have just created our very first model, um, but we need to be able to interact with it. So let's create our first controller. So I close these out real quick, go back to our terminal. I'm going to hit Command K to clear this. So remember, the controller lives between your model and the views. It gets data from the model and then gives it to the view to be rendered. So we can create a controller much in the same way that we do with the model. So let's run the Rails generate command. Generate. Uh, but instead of model, we're going to generate a controller. We are going to do post controller. Uh, notice this one is plural, whereas uh, the model was uh, a singular post. And we are also going to throw in a controller action uh, called index. So let's uh, create that. So Rails just created a bunch of stuff for us. It created the uh, controller file right here. Um, it also creates a route, um, git post slash index, um, a view file for us, um, as well as the view directory right here, um, a test unit, a helper assets, uh, such as the uh, coffee script file, where we can write some JavaScript or coffee script, I mean. Um, as well as some um, as a SCSS file where we can write our styles. So first off, you do not need to add this uh, index action. You don't have to have any actions by default. So if you did not include the index uh, action on the generate command, it wouldn't create the route or the view files for us. Uh, we would need to create those ourselves. So let's uh, pull that up. Let's go under app, uh, controllers, and post controller. So uh, Rails has created a class called PostController, which is inheriting from application controller, and it wrote a def index end. So this is a controller action. So the purpose of a action inside the controller is to collect information to provide for the view. Uh, remember, it's the controller's job to get data from the model for it to be rendered in the view. The def index also corresponds to the view. Uh, so if we open up views, uh, posts, index.rb, we open up that file and the, and the controller. So this def index is named the same as index.html.erb. So we're going to be creating a new action for each of the uh, CRUD abilities we want uh, in our blogging application. So create, read, update, destroy. One more file it created for us is under config and routes.rb. Um, it created this git uh, post slash index. Um, and because it created this route for us, we can go to our controller or to our browser, go to slash post slash index and actually view that file. So if we go back to the index, you can see uh, post index, find me an app views, and that's what's being rendered on the browser. So congrats, you just uh, created your first page inside a Rails application. So the power of Rails comes from dynamic contents. So in the next video, we're going to start making everything dynamic and add the ability to create, read, update, and destroy blog posts. Uh, we'll go through how to create a form to be able to create data and save it to our model. Um, we'll how to tweak our controller to get that data out of the model and give it to our view to be rendered.